That's right, I'm a country boy, I guess you could tell. I've got a cartoon that we're working on, going to be on television next year. So I want to tell you a little bit about this cartoon I'm doing. It's called Adventures of the Stuntcock. It's about a rooster. Big, big rooster. Kind of like the big chicken in Marietta. Now the mom, Alea, and the old rooster dry rock were a little worried that they couldn't have a baby because they were elderly. I can certainly relate to that. Dry Rot took multiple fertility drugs and Alea took a bunch of hormones and they didn't tell each other. Long story short, they're going to give birth to a quadruple yoker. It's going to be the biggest cock anyone has ever seen. Now, the Ventures of the Stump Cock takes place on a little farm in Georgia called the G-Spot, very close to coming, <laughs> and somewhere in between where she take a pee and poke a horse. That's funny. Bordering on frustration, close to coming, and right in there where Ben Finger is. The G-Spot's a little hard to find. Sometimes it takes hours to find this place. But once you get there, even on a short visit, you're always asked politely to return. <laughs> Thank you. Now there's a couple characters. Thank you very much. There's a couple characters that hang out on this here farm. So let's introduce them to you. And what I've tried to come up with is every animal is either a celebrity or somebody I know. Because if I put my friends in this, I'd never have a friend. So these are some of the characters that I've come up with, and you tell me if you agree with this. Uh, first of all, we got Porny the pig. You, you got the stunt cock, you gotta have Porny the pig. He's the best friend of the stunt cock. Wherever the cock goes, you see Porny. Wherever Porny goes, you see the cock. And Porny's a Jewish pig. No, I don't even know. Jewish pig. Oh, I get an itch. I can't even lick myself. Oh, it wouldn't be kosher. <laughs> I'm suffering from separation anxiety. You don't know what it's like. I was in seven weeks, eight weeks max. They ripped me off the nipple. They circumcised me and sent me off to live with a little piglet named Babe. Oh, Babe. They did this. Babe did that. Babe. Oh, I hate Babe. I hope he's a tenderloin by now. Babe could talk to a sheep like no other that I've ever seen. Why do you think they were so compliant? Babe did this. Babe did that. Now, I have a paparazzi in my cartoon. Lester the Mole Squinton. Now, if Bill Clinton was an animal, wouldn't he be a mole? Kind of grabby, feely. Can't admit to anything. Lester likes to get up underneath the chicken coop and watch the chickens lay an egg. Oh my God. She's gonna lay an egg. This is so cool. She's gonna stretch. She's stretching. She's gonna lay that egg right on my face, the camera. This is so great. Lester the mole. I have a bull. All farms have a bowl. I have Balls the bowl. He's French. I used to be conceited till I found out I was playing perfect. And I come home one day to my beloved cow, Connie Langus. <laughs> Connie Langus, Connie Langus, oh how I love her. But I walk in and I catch her with a buffalo. Can you believe it? A buffalo? Who but Ted Turner would put the cow and the buffalo together, I ask you. My confidence was shattered. And then Connie Langus kind of talks like Betty Boop, you know, she's in there drying her hair, you know, in her bra, four cups. I want to be melt by you, not just the cow's hoofs will do. Moo, 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 moo. I miss my buffalo. I wish he'd come back. I had balls the bull, but I want my buffalo. Please come back. And then she finds a note. My beloved Connie Langus. Oh, how I miss those hours and hours of milking till we both were dry. But unfortunately, Ted Turner has called me for his steakhouse. And as you know, when Turner calls, I must go but I will miss you so much. And I hope to see you again, my beloved Connie Langus. Balls the bull and Connie Langus the cow. 
Now it's come to my attention that there's a vote going on in California that could make history. Legalizing marijuana. Yeah. California. I can see it now. <laughs> so I've added a couple of characters to my cartoon that has to do with this very subject matter. They're squirrels. Schwag which is an ammonia-smelling varmint that you'd only associate with if you absolutely had to. And homegrown, a big fat bushy squirrel with a lot of red hairs. And they hydroponically grow their own hazelnuts inside their tree. Now, sometimes it's hard to come up for voices for cartoons. We bat ideas around with the writers. But I came up with these two for the squirrels. First of all, Schwag. I have a buddy, Billy from Boston. Billy's one of these guys that's only happy if he's miserable. Billy, how you doing? Ah, oh, I want you to come over. I got something I want you to see. So I go over to Billy from Boston's house expecting a new car, a dog, something nice. And I walk into his house and there it is. A squash. Oh, I want you to see my squash. And I'm like, oh, gee, oh, yeah, that's, that's really nice, man. That's one nice squash you got there. Isn't it beautiful? He tells me how he wants to cook it and prepare it. So I pat Billy on the back. Nice squash, Billy. So I get a call a couple hours later. He has a brother named Dickie that he lives with. He calls me, irate, angry. You'll never guess what happened. What happened, Billy? You know that squash? I know the squash. Well, my brother Dickie moved it. I was like, well, that son of a bitch moved your squash. How could he do such a thing to you, Billy? So, Schwag and Homegrown the Squirrels. Homegrown's on the computer, looking things up, figuring out how he can use his horticollar knowledge to grow his own hazelnuts. <laughs> the voice of him is done by Anthony Hopkins, who was Hannibal. Schwag and homegrown. Schwag, if you get off your moldy nuts long enough and come over here, I'll teach you all about hazelnuts. Ah, oh, gee, I never heard of no hazelnuts before. It says right here on the internet that you can learn to grow your own hazelnuts at the dam. I heard of that there. Damn, they got that there red clay district. That's right. With the beavers sit in windows, they just smile at you with those big buck teeth and those big old tails. Oh, gee, tell me, old grown, have you ever had the pleasure to spend a night with a beaver? As a matter of fact, I had. Her name was Patricia. I had a lovely evening with her, and by morning she let me call her Pat. And then I had breakfast with her brother Phil. Oh, first Pat the beaver, then Phil the beaver. beaver. <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> anyway, the Hazelnut College is about a mile from there. Hey, check it out, homegrown. The Hazelnut College. Good old THC. That's pretty good, Shway. Uh, Pat nuts close to coming. I've had nuts off a mossy stump. I've had nuts from a cur. I've had nuts mine. I've had nuts bold. I forage cause they're free. But the greatest nuts we long to have are grown at THC. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what cartoons do when there's commercials on, like Popeye and Olive. What do you think they talk about when they're not on screen? Oh, Popeye, I wish you had a big muscular penis like Bluto. All of you anorexic bitch. <laughs> so Popeye Downs and McCann of Spinach. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 All of a sudden his manliness comes out like an anvil. <clears throat> so he grabs Olive over Cannon. He's over there doggy style. <laughs> Pop 
Popeye, you found my jeans, Pop Popeye's alert. <laughs> Popeye and Olive. I have a goat in my cartoon. Any Christopher Walken fans out there? Yeah. Christopher. Yeah. Quincy does a great Christopher Walken. And you, and you would think that Christopher kind of looks like a goat. You know, he's over there sharpening, filing his horns, singing opera. And a film crew is walking up with a microphone to film him. He's filing his horns, they're walking with the mic. Whoa! Hey, fellas, what are you doing with that probing type instrument there? I'm not ready for another worm check yet. It's a mic. He's carrying a mic. I don't care. Mike, Bob, Pete, Ted, it don't matter. You're not going to shove that where the sun don't shine. It's a microphone. Guinea, he's, he's carrying a microphone. Whoa! A microphone. You fellas really had me going there for a minute. A microphone. An ADHD goat. ADHD goat with quite a temper. That's kind of like Britney Spears having a silicone explosion, you know? Ha. Hit me, baby, one more time. Blam! Bongo, titty, the titty go, bam! I grew up in Montana. Obviously, country boy, men are men, sheep are nervous. It's a great place to be from. But I've been a Georgia boy for about 25, 30 years now. And sometimes I see commercials that don't make sense to me. Like, have you seen the one? Police are tracking down all over the nation. We're setting up roadblocks to stop people for DUI. Now, here's a guy with a helmet full of beer, and he pulls the visor up, and all this beer flows out, and the officer says, Sir, have you been drinking? <laughs> Wouldn't that be a given? Wouldn't you really think that this guy had been drinking? No, I hadn't had a thing to drink. Okay, you can go. W w what if it's a joint that this guy gets pulled over in California? All right, sir, pull over. You're doing 30 and a 60. Get out of the car. Sir, have you been smoking? <laughs> yeah, officer, of course. Well, I think we might have to run you in for this. Either go to jail, or we'll give you this candy bar to eat. So he munches out of the candy bar, gets out of the arrest. Legalization of marijuana happening in California. What, well, do you think Arnold had something to do with that? Yes, I would totally bump you up. First, I have to get something for my appetite. <laughs> well, folks, it's been great having you here. Listen for the cartoon, Adventures of the Stumpcock, that takes place on that farm in Georgia. Y'all have a great time. Thank you for having me up here tonight. Give it up one more time for D.C. Palmer, ladies and gentlemen. Ultra clever, ultra clever. Up here talking about Popeye and olive oil. When I saw Popeye cartoon for the first time, I thought, sailors will fuck anything. You know what I'm saying? They have been on that boat a long time. I mean, because olive used to be around some really whole lot better looking women. And Popeye would just keep on trying to, and then she wasn't even a faithful bitch. She's just always, he always had to fight Bluto over her. Which made me think Bluto was pretty jealous and desperate too, you know what I'm saying? Who would fight over an olive oil? Say they got a cartoon coming out. DC Palmer, does anybody uh, think that you might pull up the sexual predator registry and find him on there? Does anybody think that? <laughs> Is it just me? Have I seen him on, on To Catch a Predator? Have I seen him there? With the THC, that, that's all some super clever shit. I agree with him, though, about the DUI. Uh, Georgia is serious about the DUI shit. How many people have ever had a DUI by round of applause? 